goldshave.com. How's everybody doing? Uh, so we're doing a video series on how I restore shave brushes. Um, so this is going to be like the final stage. If you guys watch part one, two, and three of this, uh, you saw what we did to get to the brush to this condition. All right. So now this brush is going to be on how I paint the letters on the brush. Okay, this is done already. And how I set the knot. So if you have deep letters like this one does, okay, you can use stuff called rub and buff. You can buy a sample package of it on eBay. What I usually do is just put this on a cloth. And when you kind of rub it into the depth of the old letters. And what you get is you'll get new letters like this. Nice, shiny, clean, filled letters. Okay? And then after I do that, I take a super fine brush and I'll just go around the letters and just clean up any rub and buff that was left behind. If you don't have deep letters like this one does, you can use model paint. Okay? And then the brush, you can get this on eBay. It's made for like detailed work. I don't know why. Stand by, guys. Let me pause this one second. Alright, no 4G. Alright. Alright, now we should be in business. Let me make. Alright, sorry about that, guys. So, as I was saying, if I used the rub and buff to fill these in. Alright, if you don't have the depth, you use a model paint, whichever color you want to paint, and a super fine brush like this. Alright, and you actually take the time to fill in each letter with the paint and a super fine brush. Then what I usually do is I'll let it dry, and you can use moss, uh, like moss polish or even mineral spirits, and clean the remaining paint that was left around the brushes. And then uh, I set my knot, and then I give it a final polish. So I'm going to show you guys, so I just showed you guys how I do the letters. Alright, this is finished with rub and buff. Now I'm going to show you guys how I set knots. Let me show you guys. Alright, so you can use a pair of digital calibers. These are just cheap from Harbor Freight. If you don't have digital calibers, you can use a coin. Every coin is a certain amount of millimeter. So if the coin drops in and fits in the brush, then you know, go online, Google like what a quarter millimeter is. And that'll give you an idea of what size knot you need to put in your handle. All right, I use a, a caliper, digital caliper, all right, and I actually, it'll tell me close enough what I need. So this one is around 23.29. So I know I can get a 23 millimeter knot into this handle. If I board it open a little bit, you could probably get a 24. Sometimes I do that for guys' brushes. Um, this, I'm gonna stick to the 23. So this is a 23 millimeter silver tip. Alright, I'm going to test fit it before I even get involved in glues and epoxies and everything. So I know that fits now, okay? This brush is hollow. If it wasn't hollow, I would just use epoxy. But if you look inside that brush, it's hollow. So now what I'm going to do to give this, br this brush a little bit of weight is a little bit secret that I use. I'll fill you guys in on it. Is I use, you can get this in Home Depot, it's a two-part fiberglass resin. I mix it like in one of these plastic containers, I'll backfill the handle, and then I'll set the knot in the resin, and uh, it dries pretty quick. So you mix it with this, this is the hardener, alright, and then I'll show you guys how I do the loft. So what I'm going to do is just put the two part of the uh, resin in here. I have a rubber mat that I usually work over, I'm pretty neat freak. I'll just take, now I'll take the hardener. You can, you know, I just eyeball it really with the hardener. Probably about 40 to 50 drops, I think, of the hardener, depending on how much epoxy uh, resin you use. All right, that should be plenty. Now I mix it with a spoon. All right. Just really mix this thoroughly. Make sure that all the resin and the hardener mix together. This will add weight to the handle. Some people want weight. Even with the knot, the handles are too loose. 
I just use this container over and over. All right, so now I'm going to backfill. I'm going to pull this actually into the handle. And I'm probably going to set this pretty deep. So I don't want to put too much in. All right, so now I have some in there. So now what I'm going to do is drop this knot in. All right, push it down. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my digital calipers and you want to measure from like the base of the knot to the top of the knot. All right, that'll tell you what loft you want to be at. I like lofts like between 48 and 50. I seen that they work the best for kind of like a universal loft. And we're right about, let me see a little bit more here. I'm probably right around 47, 48. So I'm going to leave it there. That's a good general uh, loft that I like to use. Everybody likes different lofts. I find that 48 to 50 is a good all around um, loft to use. I'm actually a little bit higher than I thought I was. So this can come down a little bit. I'm like at 50 now. So all you do just to get the loft to come down is you just push the knot. Give it a twist. Alright, now just go back with the calibers again. I can still go even a little bit lower. I'm not getting where I want to be, so... Alright, let me see where I am. I go 48 between 48 and 50 like I said I'm right like around right now in the 50 range like 50.69 so I'm, I'm gonna keep it there that's good between 48 to 50 I find like I said um, now that's pretty much it now I'll just let the knot and the uh, and the hardener kind of do its thing now I usually keep like a keep like a paper towel around or like a microfiber towel just in case any of the glue sneaks out any your resin sneaks out you just wipe it right up you can also clean it in the last stage with the polish so now that's how you set a knot guys the final final stage after this is done after this resin hardens the knot what I'm gonna do then is I'll hand polish this with moss with a microfiber towel I'll package it up and I'll send it out so you guys seen the whole process how I do things if you're interested in having oh these are the super fine brushes you can get these on eBay all right, if you guys are interested in having a vintage brush restored, um, you can check us out, check me out, strikegoldshave.com. Uh, we do vintage brush restores. Uh, I do gold dollar, gold dollar honing. Uh, we have our own soap line. Um, that's it guys, so if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. You can get me over at my Etsy shop or get me over at strikegoldshave.com. Leave me a message and I'll happy to get back to you. Alright guys, thanks for checking out this video series, uh, I think I'm maybe the first one that's done a video actually start to finish on a brush restore, but now you guys know how I do it. Thanks for watching guys, have a good one, check us out again, strikegoldshave.com, and we'll speak to everybody soon. Take care.